21. The yogin who established in oneness worships me abiding in all beings, lives in me, howsoever he may be active. Shri Krishna says a yogi who sees everything as one, the supreme soul, and worships the supreme soul abiding in all creatures, and such a person lives in the supreme soul, and whatever works he does will be the work of the supreme soul. There has never been a spiritual messenger in the world as rational and practical as Shri Krishna. All the religious messages that were there before and after Shri Krishna confined religion to behavior and looked at how a person behaves. As civilizations grew, we saw and next fella said that what we call civilization is actually making people more and more hypocrites. The attitude of Mukme Ram Badan Me Chori, Ram is in a, ma uh, in a mouth and the naked body keeps increasing. A person's behavior may be good, but what is the reason behind his action? Shri Krishna says that he does not call such a person religious. It does not call such a person a yogi. Shri Krishna only calls a person yogi who sees the Supreme Soul in everyone. A person established in oneness is a person with the attitude of samatva, one who sees the same everywhere. No matter what such a yogi may be doing and no matter what his behavior may be like, he will just live in Shri Krishna. Just look at all the devotees there have been. There was Guru Kumbar, a putter in Maharashtra, Sota Mari, a gardener, Katki Chamar, a tanner, all of whom became devotees. Kabir was a weaver and he became a devotee. Savatta vat monoti sanyoge maya vatate. So called people who do mara chanting God's name while moving a prayer bead between a thumb and a middle finger only turned the mara, whereas Kabir, while weaving clothes, not only weaved his life but also by giving inspiration, weaved the lives of others. Such was Kabir. Shri Krishna does not give much weight to actions on the outside. Bhajans, devotional songs, can be of two types. The first is to sit alone and sing or listen to devotional songs in praise of the Supreme Soul and we have held on to this definition. The second, greater definition given by Shri Krishna in this verse is to see the Supreme Soul in each and every place. When we worship the Supreme Soul, then when we are alone, then this is really practice to see the Supreme Soul in each and every place. It is a rehearsal. Seeing the Supreme Soul in each and every place is true devotion. Sayogi Maya Vatate means such a yogi always lives in me. You should see God even in your enemies. It is said about Jesus Christ that during the Last Supper there were 12 disciples and Jesus Christ was a 13th. That is why the number 13 has been made an unlucky number in Christianity. Christianity says that one should not even be born in the 13th of any month. While eating, Christ found out that soldiers were coming to get him and were looking for him. Christ and his disciples were eating in someone's basement. When they found out that the soldiers were searching for him, then the disciples were talking amongst themselves while eating. At that moment, Christ said that one of you will make me get caught. Out of Christ's twelve closest disciples, one of them would get Christ caught. That disciple was called Judas. Judas asked Christ, What are you talking about, Master? How could one of you get us caught? Christ looked at him and said, Judas, before the cockerel makes a sound in the morning, you are going to lie four times. Judas was not prepared to believe this and said that he would never do this. Christ told him, just see because before the cockerel makes sound in the morning, you are going to lie four times. And this happened in reality. Before the dinner finished, all the soldiers came and the disciples ran away. The soldiers took Christ away and Judas had a lot of strong feelings that they were taking away his master. He kept walking behind Christ. There were a lot of crowds and they saw that Jesus Christ had been caught. They said what they had to say, and because it was night time, they went home and went to sleep. Judas was the only person that kept following Christ, and all the soldiers found this strange. They wondered who he was. They asked who he was, and Judas just said that he was traveling in that direction. He lied. Secondly, the soldiers asked Judas if he knew Christ, and that was why he was walking with them. Judas said, no, I don't know him. He lied a second time. Judas kept walking behind them. Thirdly, the soldiers asked Judas if he had any relation to Christ and that is why he was walking behind them. Judas said, no, I am not related to him. He lied a third time. Then lastly, at the time Christ's crucifixion came and the soldiers were nailing him to the cross and the entire town crowded round to see. There were thousands of people there. While Christ was being nailed to the cross, tears came in Judas's eyes. Judas thought, I lied three times. I do not know how my master knew about me. The entire crowd of people were screaming and shouting for the soldiers to hit Christ, put him on the cross and were encouraging the soldiers. All these crowds were aligned with the rulers. 
There was only one person who had tears in his eyes on seeing Christ being nailed to the cross. A person standing next to Judas asked Judas, All these people in the crowd are shouting that it's good and that he's going, yet there are tears in your eyes. Do you know him? Judas said, while wiping his tears, No, I do not know him. As soon as he lied the fourth time, the cockerel made a sound straight away. Judas remembered that he lied four times before the cockerel made a sound, such was Judas. He got Christ caught by saying that this is Christ. It is said that before Christ was being taken to his crucifixion, he washed Judas' feet and drank the same water. Christ washed the feet of the very disciple that got him caught and who believed like an enemy to him and thereafter drank this water. That is what you call worshipping the supreme soul abiding in all beings. This even to one's enemy. Christ did not see Judas in him. He saw the supreme soul in him. And when Christ was being crucified, Christ was not 80 or 85 years of age. He was very young. He had such an age, we could have done a lot of things in life, yet he was crucified on the cross. Such a person lives in God, and no matter what they may be doing, they are doing it for God. It is very important what one's vision is towards the world. Shri Krishna says the same thing in the next verse. 